So we started playing in 2013 Ghosts, and it was an incredible feeling to be able to play Game Battles matches again, because Arch and I and Diesel have been playing Game Battles matches since, well, he and I since Call of Duty 2, Hutch and I since, and, and, and Diesel since Call of Duty 4, over and over, pro mod, and over and over. Like, SND for me has always reigned supreme and will continue to reign supreme as the most entertaining one, uh, because there, there, there's gonna be a high probability that it's gonna go to a one life chance to win or lose a game. How many round 11s, 1v1s yeah. do you see on a daily you or get on, to, on a you tournament? You get to hype each other up when you make the 1v1 or you get to destroy that person when they screw it all up. And there's you can't get that in domination. There's, there's more opportunities for like glory. Ho holy shit moments. Like, like yeah. glorious moments where uh, Witness. Yeah, 1v4, like <laughs> you know, or like some crazy 1v2 clutch with the bomb down or something. There's just, you know, domination is kind of, it, it, it's just, for me with Call of Duty, it's just the respawn game types have never been super entertaining especially game types like hardpoint because you're just switching back and forth between so many different perspectives and if you're a caster you have to kind of just guess like who's going to make that big play or something sometimes they guess right but um, but with snd it's just I, I think it's just a much more focused experience as a viewer it's just something i've always enjoyed and csgo is just another one of those games i don't play it hardly at all anymore but it's just still so much fun to watch yeah. uh, professionals play that game 20 years later after the games come out and it's just such a interesting formula. Do you think that Call of Duty would have the same watchability, if that's a word, uh, if they never changed or gradually changed year by year the uh, the franchise? Because there's no way that at the beginning, at 360 of the of the Xbox 360, that they knew that Call of Duty was going to be a billion dollar a year business for them every single year. I think that they knew that it had, well. How? I mean, I mean, COD Two was a huge success on on Xbox 360 for a long time. And PC. There, I think it was like 60 percent of people that had Xbox 360s had Call of Duty Two, which is just crazy, crazy numbers. It was great. I think by the time COD Four came around, I think they understood like this franchise is going to be big. You know, World of War came out. I think it had like similar sales, but. Uh, Modern Warfare 2 came out. It was the biggest entertainment launch of all time at the time. It yeah. made a billion dollars in one weekend. And um, as far as I know, I think that was the first time that a video game had ever done that. And then once they were able to, you know, Black Ops 1, I think, was another pretty pretty big financial success. And I think that at that point they knew, like, this is something that's... But you but you kind of raise up raise an interesting point where it's like, would, would they be able to make as much money or would the game be, be better, a overall better experience if it was just one game that mm -hmm. they would continue to iterate on, like Fortnite, CSGO, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, I doubt that'll ever happen. I think happen. for eSports, it would be it, it would benefit from that if it had a, a core, like just at least a core yeah. frame that it stayed it stayed Infinity Ward. That's, yeah, that's and what then, you were talking and about. And that kind of thing. And then maybe have new developers create Different BRs, or, yeah, the, the thing or I, different things like that. The Take thing, it out of the, I don't think it needs to be a new Call of Duty every, yeah. every single year, I think. Every two years. And yeah, the, the, the thing about that is that nobody expected it to be that competitive, but more importantly, like up until just recently, like the, co the competition esports side of Call of Duty has always been an advertisement or an advertising sort of platform for the actual game. You know, here are the best players playing the Call of Duty and buy the new skins, buy the new whatever. If you remember, Call of Duty Champs was in the middle of May. April, May, around those times, and yeah. they still had, you know, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest tournament of the year was in the middle of the game, mm -hmm. and the only reason that was is because they had advertising dollars for the game for the second half launch of the game. So all the all the bacon camo, all the diamond cam, all the stuff that you could buy, that's what it was for. It was an advertising thing. It was an advertising um, opportunity for for the game. So now that they are sort of shifting and seeing like the potential of the true esport, you know, phenomena that's happening, that's now now that they have that opportunity. So champs is just not a thing anymore. Uh, uh, there is going to be a world champs, yes. But there's just not going to be called champs. Cr I don't know. I couldn't tell you because they had uh, Mark Cuban had <clears throat> some little segment where he said that it's super hard to have invest in mm -hmm. in esports now because the games are constantly changing. So. The rosters are constantly changing. The, the turnover rate super high, so there's not a lot of money to be made. And he said, right now it's it's a terrible investment to own an esports team. Mm -hmm. Is what I think his exact words. 
because of that reason. So I think if I think, so, if, I think if Call of Duty, teams, for sure. I think if Call of Duty stayed with the framework and then just rolled out some updates. Yeah, I think I think uh, <laughs> obviously you know I, I admire I admire Mark Cuban obviously for what he's built and what he's done. But in in this in this sort of scenario, and I'm being super biased, right? Uh, obviously, I had. A, a very successful exit. So his, uh, you know, him saying that esports isn't a good investment. I disagree from a from personal experience. I truly disagree. But he's I think also maybe it's more just like the VC people. Coming yeah, in. I mean, those, obviously, those right? Like it, it is people, when, when people don't know how to run something and, and money comes in. Obviously, they want to uh, you know mature it quicker than it should. Bottom line is this: Yes, some some esports teams are a super super bad investment, but there are the real esports team that sit at the top that are solid investments because they will become. What it, it's inevitable with the viewership that we have now at such a young age in esports. It is inevitable that every team or some teams or some esports become the new NFL, NBA, that's whatever. Are we there right now? Absolutely not. Right? Mm-hmm. Are there cracks on the foundation? Absolutely. But if you go back to the to the beginning of football, the beginning of basketball, the beginning of whatever, there's cracks in those situations too. And if you're telling me that you're not willing to put some money up to hopefully see your thing become an NFL, you're lying to yourself.